right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're back at it, working on the Malibu. Now today we're gonna be doing something I didn't expect to be doing. A friend actually brought this up when I was doing the brake lines and he just mentioned it would probably be a good idea to just throw a cheap head unit in it, being all cars today have some kind of Bluetooth or backup camera. So if this thing had um, at least Bluetooth, it would probably sell a little bit better. And there are plenty of cheap head units you could get out there. You're not gonna break the bank just throwing like a cheapy head unit with Bluetooth in the thing. But I kind of did one better. I went onto Amazon and I picked up, not by accident, but I was searching just for um, Bluetooth head unit. And the number of ones that were coming up were these touchscreen units. So I picked up this seven inch touchscreen, comes with a remote. Um, and a backup camera. Not only does it accept a backup camera, it comes with a backup camera. And this thing cost me under 50 bucks. So, um, how good is it gonna be? Oh wow, this thing is light. Is it plastic or? I think it's metal. Kinda plasticky. Has a volume knob, you guys know I like my volume knobs. But very 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 cheap and if you notice there isn't actually a model number on it it just says 7018b so we're going to be installing the 7018b head unit today um, they do have a little micro sd slot right there which is kind of cool and of course you have your regular auxiliary input and then they give you a usb for the back you do have video in video out um, you have left and right channel out. So I guess if you want to hook up an amp, it doesn't have front and rear, but we're not using this uh, to make a booming system anyway. All we need to do, get the backup camera working, get the Bluetooth working with the factory speakers and get this thing out of our hands. Only other thing I had to pick up was a dash kit. So I got this off of eBay for like under 20 bucks. It comes with the trim, the brackets, and then they give you like a hardware kit with butt connectors and stuff. So you can see the stereo in here right now is absolute um, garbage, I wanna say. It sounds fine, like there's some low end and stuff. It's absolutely fine for a 2001 Malibu, but as far as features go, this thing has nothing. It doesn't even have a cassette deck. So first thing we're gonna do, pull the surrounding trim off. I'm assuming this black piece is gonna pop off. Ugh, we'll find out in a second. Yeah. Whoop. I gotta move the gear shifter. Also, for anybody who's wondering, I have the brake lines all taken care of. Because remember last time when we went for the drive, I said the pedal was a little spongy. I ended up re-bleeding them and the back brakes had a little bit of air in them. So now they're 100% good. All right, this is simple as hell. We're already at the bolts. We have three, what appear to be, I think they're seven millimeters. We zip them out and that's it, the radio's out. Easy enough. All right, so here's our harness. This is what I'm talking about. Um, to get the aftermarket wire to work, you need to actually have the uh, pigtails to solder it or butt connect it into the radio harness. And a lot of people like to cut these off and just figure out which wires do what themselves. And then when they resell the car, it is an absolute bitch. Um, for the next owner, you have to get a pigtail if you want to connect it correctly and figure out which wires do what. So just pay whatever the hell, it's like $5, whatever this is, and just do it the right way. And simple enough, this just plugs into here. No cutting required. And now we're going to splice our speaker wires into the end of the uh, radio harness. They give you a lot of instruction manuals. Like, there's a manual for each different language. One... Two, three. In order to prevent short circuit and so on, do not drop the metal objects. Do not drop the metal objects in the device. If there is smoke or peculiar smell in device, please turn off the power at once. Please do not make the device falling or strong collision. 
And what I want to mention before I start splicing these, because I got quite a few questions when I put the head unit in the Tahoe. Um, if you don't have the information here, like this tells you exactly which color does what, as well as the package for the connector for the car. Um, I'd say 95% of the time, these colors match up. So you're just going to match them up, you know, yellow to yellow, um, black to black, green, black stripe, green, black stripe. They're all um, the same. You know, some instances you might have a couple that don't line up. Like, for instance, we have orange with the white stripe and solid orange. You can see here, all we have is a light orange, but just, you know, kind of process of elimination it, connect all the ones that match up. And from there, usually you can figure out where the last ones go. All right, so I just finished heat shrinking and soldering all the connections. The only two I didn't use were this orange um, with the white stripe here. The solid orange is the one for illumination. And then the pink one on the radio side, which is for, um, it said parking brake. I'm guessing if you're watching videos or something on here. I never hooked that one up because I never watch uh, videos or anything. I don't think, I don't know who really does. Everything you could do from your phone now, but I'm just going to plug both of these ends in, pop it into the radio, and then it's just a backup camera. I'm just going to plug it in. We'll turn it on, make sure it boots up. Then we'll actually get it mounted in the dash. All right, our connections are made. It's not turning on by itself. That's a good sign. Uh, where's the key? All right, so it might not be the radio's fault right away. Um, checking for power here. The uh, I just plugged the old radio back in. That turns on no problem. And checking for power where it's supposed to have power, the 12 volt switch to ignition on. Um, it has nothing. So I don't know if it's the power or the ground that's bad. I'm going to check. All right, so our constant power has just about 12 volts. So the problem is the 12 volt um, turn on signal. It's not getting that. Okay, I'm, I'm looking on the car right now. And the position where the red wire is connected in the harness is not going to anything. There's nothing there. So that's why we have no power which is weird. That's like a discrepancy in the adapter. This is supposed to be for an 01 Malibu. Um, all right, I just got to figure out which one of these is switched 12 volts. And I'll see if I can move the pin around. Actually, you know what I'm realizing? The harness, this piece here, came with this extra red wire. So this radio might not have a switch 12. All right, here we are, final update before assembly. I moved the 12 volt ignition wire over to the uh, the 12 volt wire going to the HVAC controls. I didn't have a fuse tap and I couldn't find any wires in the radio harness that would actually supply 12 volts. So this wire going into the controls here um, gets energized when the key is on. So I got that all soldered in here, wrapped it up. I soldered it in at the radio. That's good to go. I also just blasted the radio, had the blower motor on five, turned the lights on, um, hit the brake lights, did a bunch of stuff to make sure that it wasn't going to overload the circuit and blow the fuse. All right, I just wanted to throw this in here quick before I get to the final um, wrap up and putting the trim back on. I got the camera mounted up by the license plate. So just in case you're doing this to a Malibu yourself, the wire you're going to want is going to be this green wire right here. And that's going to be the power trigger. So when it goes into reverse, this wire gets power, which is going to the reverse light. And then that's going to give you a 12 volts. All right, so the backup camera wire is ran extremely simple in this car. The entire back of the radio is basically open. So I just ran it through the back seat underneath the plastics up here tucked it under the panel, and then it just comes right up through there. It's a straight shot right down to that gap. Um, the trigger wire, I have that connected to this pink one. I didn't realize it um, when I was doing it, but I completely forgot the, uh, the camera needs a power jump 
or like a signal wire coming from the uh, the actual video wire to the harness. So that's what that pink one was for. I think it said parking input or something on the instructions. All right, guys, so it works. Unfortunately, I'm recording with my phone and I don't have my GoPro here, so I can't actually play the music through YouTube um, and record at the same time. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna grab the GoPro and we're gonna do a full test of this thing once the backup camera and everything is kind of back together. But I did a quick little adjustment of the screen. They actually have a good amount of settings here. A few EQs you could choose from, rock, pop, class, or no EQ. I just have it on rock. Volume, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue. So there's a good amount of uh, screen adjustments as well. I turned the contrast down, um, saturation up a little bit because it looked kind of washed out when I first plugged it in, but it actually uh, looks a lot better now after adjusting it. For the Bluetooth connection, you just go onto your phone and select the thing that says car BT and connect to it. There's no actual setting in here um, where you have to go and add a phone, whatever. It's actually extremely simple to connect to Bluetooth. It's just like if you're connected to Bluetooth headphones or something, basically. Now it's time to get this baby bolted in. Okay, that's a problem. Doesn't fit in the dash kit. Wow, that is a bitch. It's not even the same size as the dash. All right, I got some stuff to figure out here now. So I gotta see how I can get this to fit between the brackets they give and the uh, dash kit. All right, guys, I think I got it in. I didn't hook up the wires yet, but just using the two brackets they supply, I was able to get it in there. And it all lines up pretty good. Um, I'm gonna shift the radio slightly over to the right because there's a tiny, tiny gap just right there. But overall, using the trim piece they supplied, that's a, that uh, covered up this gap here. And I got the radio positioned where it's full forward, there's no gap, and all the controls are still accessible. So now I'm just gonna pop this out, put the actual screws in it, put all the wires up, and I think we'll be good to go. These are the brackets they supplied. I just gotta open up these holes because they don't quite line up with where I need them to be. All right, our screws are in. We got our backup camera mounted right there and i just ran the wire up through this hole and then i made a uh hole between the trunk like bottom of the body into the bumper and then the wires just fished through there and now that i have my gopro get some music playing see how she sounds bluetooth got the volume up all the way on the phone I mean, it has some good volume to it, considering it's probably got a really cheap amp. And right now I have the settings. The bass is pretty much up all the way. I have the treble just up a tick. And it has a pretty good full sound. Considering it has the original speakers from old one, they're probably paper and old as shit. Um, the sound is relatively full. If you want a cheap upgrade, I mean for $44, $45, I really don't think you could beat it. Great sound. Features are decent. You get the backup camera. I mean, I think the two primary features for this are going to be the backup camera and the Bluetooth. One thing I'm noticing though, if you click off of Bluetooth mode and you're not actually in it, it cuts the music so you can't just get out of bluetooth and go here if you want to see the time that's kind of annoying um it's just in the software for the price i mean what can you expect but you do have a usb up here you can connect a usb play mp4 file through that uh display photos if you want it for some reason you got a standard auxiliary input here you have a micro sd so it has a good amount of inputs for what it is um this is the ir for the remote and i believe that is a microphone because it doesn't come with the uh, external microphone. But there is a port in the back. So if you want to add one, you should be able to. It doesn't have a USB in the back. So this is the only USB you're going to get is up front here. But I mean, overall, just browsing through the interface, 
it for what it is it's decent i mean it's relatively quick you just gotta you gotta give it some firm presses it's not ridiculously fast to respond i mean it doesn't respond to really light taps but you have uh some settings in here parking setting i'm not sure exactly what parking setting means because the backup camera is working you could change the backlight where is it yeah backlight over here i don't know what auto means if it just changes i just have it on white to match the regular lights regular radio I don't have an antenna hooked up right now in the back, so I just got some static. But for 45 bucks, man, I mean, if you want a quick backup camera, I mean, it comes with the camera too. That's the funny thing. You get in the radio and they also give you the camera and they also give you the two brackets and the trim. So even if it doesn't fit the dash kit, um, they still have this stuff in there to make it fit. So yeah, I'd have to call the 7018B head unit a pretty good deal for the money. Movie... I don't think it's going to work because I don't have any kind of media. I'm not exactly, it just is an old disc. I'm guessing if uh, you had a USB or something plugged in, it would work. Because this doesn't have a CD player in it. It's just purely a media receiver, just like the one I put in the Tahoe. So um, any kind of media that you want to put, you can either, I guess you can hook up like a DVD player or something if you want it. Because it does have extra um, yellow composite inputs in the back plus you have the USB so if you really want to play video on this you could I'm not sure how well the playback is gonna be um, it says it's 1080p it's probably gonna be laggy I don't know for sure how the video playback is gonna be but I'm like 99% sure most of you guys are gonna be buying this just as a cheap backup camera and an easy way to get Bluetooth into an older car but I have the Malibu back on the house because I want to wash it get the engine bay cleaned up then I'm probably gonna shoot it back over to the garage give it a quick little buff paint correction whatever and I think that's going to be it. It's going up for sale. Yeah, but for now, that's going to do it for another Malibu video. I'll see you guys in a few days.